Hello and without any further ado, we'll move to the next part of our tutorial series to complete our simple and naive approach to build a platformer game in default. We'll move forward and add GUI to our game this time. GUI is totally different from all other components we used up to now for the platformer. It's bigger with a custom logic controlled by GUI script, like a completely separate world in default. Its magic hides behind a different approach to what's in this big component. Nodes and layers and how it's handled by our rendering pipeline, being always on top of the game's screen and in position somehow fixed to the window, not the game's world, like usually hoods and other UIs are in games. A more detailed description of the GUI component you can find in the other linked below videos. For now let's try to visually build a simple interface for our game. In our main folder add a new component of the GUI type. I will name it main. Now in the editor you will see a rectangular boundary of the screen dimensions. In the outline you can see a tree structure of the GUI specific elements. You can have nodes of which our GUI will consist of and you can add resources to your GUI like textures, materials, fonts or particle effects. You can also specify layouts, very useful if you are making a mobile or web game with horizontal and vertical layouts. You can also split your GUI into layers, which is very important for optimizing drawing our GUI, so I will delve into it later on. The score will be very easy to add. We already did something like this in the Space Shooter tutorial. There are four types of nodes in default GUI and templates. Our score will be a simple display of a number of gained coins. So add a text node and name it score. Text nodes need to have a font specified, so right click on fonts catalog and select add fonts. We only have a built-in system font for now and we might use it, but let's add a special font this time. In our assets folder I created a new folder called fonts. I downloaded a Kenny fonts pack and I drag and dropped the font Kenny Future TTF. To use it in default you need to create a font component, like everything in default. Right click on our assets folder and select new font. I will name it GUI font. In the editor you will see a preview of the font, but it's not our new font, so let's change the first property font to our downloaded font. We can use two output formats, bitmap or distance field, so check out how those can suit your game more. For now we will select the distance field and we need to also select a proper material for a distance field font. There is a built-in font DF material for this purpose. We will increase the size to something like 30. We will of course utilize anti-alias for fonts. You might not need it when using Pixel Perfect's fonts though. We can also add outline and shadow here, but always use it when you really need it, as it has an impact on performance. In our case we can for example specify the outline only, with width 2 and alpha 1. But we will not specify shadows and thus shadows won't be rendered. This is enough, let's get back to our GUI and add this as our font property for the font we created in GUI and then assign it to our text node by choosing it as a font property of the score text node. We can now finally see the text in the node and we can change the display text to for example score. We can move it to the top right corner ensure the color of the outline is black and we can change pivot so that it will always be aligned to the right, so east direction in default, and after it readjust the position. Save our GUI and add it to the game collection. First add a separate game object that will have this GUI component, name it GUI, and then right click on this game object and click add component file and select our newly created GUI component. When you run the game it should be visible now. Ok, let's proceed to the next element, the health bar. We will use a simple box node for it, so add a box node to our GUI, name it health and change its color to red. Then also change its size to for example 300 pixels wide 
and 30 pixels high. And it's pivot this time to west, so it will stick to the left side of the screen and move it in a desired position. It's very simple, but good for prototyping. Usually box notes are great when you assign a texture to it, but we don't need it now. If the health is decreasing, so for example we have half of the initial health, we could show some additional background behind the health bar. Let's just copy our health node, name it background, change its color to a darker one, and while holding the Alt key, click up arrow to move it up in the outline. This way it goes behind our main health bar. You can check if the effect we wanted works by changing the size of the health bar. See? We drafted a very simple prototype health bar. Always remember, first make it, then polish it. Of course, before proceeding, change back the size of our health. To handle our GUI, we need to create a GUI script. So right-click on our main folder and select New GUI Script. Name it the same as our GUI. It's very similar to regular scripts, except it can use GUI API, but not GO API. First, in order not to forget about it, assign it to our GUI. Click on the root GUI and set script property to our GUI script. We will be handling our GUI in a responsive way, so that every change in our game, like heart and score, will be handled in GUI on message. Write first a simple if-else branch to handle two messages, update health and update score. This is our base. We will change the GUI health bar size based on our current health. And to simplify this, let's decide now that our health is normalized, so that 1, 0 is 100% health and 0, 0 is 0% health. This assumption simplifies code a lot, because if you want to set up your health as 100 points or 300 or 3000, you just multiply your normalized health by that factor, and you can only use the multiplier directly to scale your health bar. We will scale the health node along the x-axis to visibly show the health condition. As said before, the GUI script uses the GUI API, and in here we have a vast amount of functions. For example, set scale for setting scale of a node, or set text for setting text in the text nodes. So when we need to update the health, assign a value from a function GUI get scale, which needs a node reference of the GUI node that we can get using GUI get node with a name of the node that we want to reference, so health this time, and store it in a local variable named health scale. It will be a vector representing the scale, so multiply its x component only by a value from a message table that we'll name health, and then that value we can apply as new scale to the node using GUI set scale, to which we also provide the same GUI node reference, and use our new local health scale as the second parameter. We can see if it works by sending a message from init to this very script using shortened hash to update health and pass the health value set to something like 0.5. When you save it and run the game, the health bar should be initialized with half of the health visible. All right, but be fair to our players and initialize the health with 100% at least. We do the same with the score. Whenever update score message is received by our GUI script, we will change the score text displayed using GUI set text on our node with ID score and set the text to the score string with number concatenated to it at the end. In Lua it will be automatically added to the string and will form a string altogether. See, I intentionally don't store anything like health or score in GUI script, as it's a good practice, in my opinion, to make it only represent the view of our application, not store any data that is processed by so-called business logic. Such separation helps you maintain a burden of larger games more easily. We can test it again by initializing the score with a simple message sent from the very same script to itself with a score value of, for example, 100. Save and check it in the game. Of course, again, after checking, initialize it with zero points in the beginning. We don't want to give players any favor in our game. 
And this is actually everything you need to start to create simplest GUIs for your games, not only platformers, but I will continue providing some tips. A great guide on how to design GUIs in default and generally in any game was written by Insality and published on default forum. Find the link in the description. We will follow some of the good advices from that. The first thing is that we just freely positioned our nodes wherever we felt like. The problem is when we scale our window to some other dimension, the layout is fixed and we don't have our health bar in the corner properly. We will slightly reorganize our nodes in the GUI. We will start by adding a root node. This will be apparent for all other GUI elements. Add a node and select box type, name it root. It can be placed anywhere, but it's another good practice to position it precisely in the middle of the screen. So look up your current game that project setting and find under display tab the initial base resolution of the game. We didn't change it, so it's 960 per 640. You can do simple calculations in the property text fields. So type, for example, in position X 960 divided by 2 and hit enter. Value will be calculated and X position will be precisely in the middle. Do the same for Y coordinate. If you additionally set the mode to stretch, it will always be positioned in the middle, regardless of the changes to the resolution of the game later on. We can check it in game. Our white box will be visible always in the center, no matter what window dimension is. But for this particular node, we don't want it to be visible actually, so we set it to invisible. Under the root node, we can add anchors. Set up similarly to our root node, but in different anchored positions, like for example north, south or north east and northwest. You can add all directions and corners, but for our game we would like to have some kind of a score counter and a health bar only, so we only really will use the top left for a health bar and top right for score display. So I added anchor NW for the northwest corner and anchor NE for the northeast corner. Corner, below our root node in the outline nodes tree, like children of the parent node, and place them in the corners of the base GUI. I also set their mode to stretch, so you can see that however I will change the window dimension, the anchors are fixed in the corners always. We also mark them invisible after setting up. Now we can drag and drop our previous health and score nodes under proper anchors. But we also need to fix the position relatively to our anchors now. Thanks to this, when we move our anchor, we will move all the child nodes. We could also change the alpha of the parent node and all nodes will disappear, because all of them have property inherit alpha set to true. Convenient for further modifications. Now we will add two layers for all our node types, box and text, because different type of nodes break batching. Details on what is batching, draw calls and how it all works are really well explained in default manuals and the linked form post. For now you only learn the basics, so leave it for the future. For more complex GUIs, layers allow to specify order of drawing nodes on the GUI, because Z position of the nodes is not affecting the order in which the nodes are rendered. It is only affected by the layer it belongs to and the order in the tree structure of the GUI. So you can imagine it like you would be drawing a picture with layers and each layer must be drawn separately according to the order in the layers in GUI. We will assign proper layers to our node types and in our case, for example, the anchor box node and the other box node for the health will be drawn together, even though the order in the tree is not like that, with text nodes interrupting the order, so breaking the batching. But if we assign all box nodes to a single layer and then all text nodes to the other layer, we have only two draw calls for our whole GUI. Using some of the basic stuff from this tutorial, you can start crafting some basic GUIs and later on learn more about its capabilities and features such as particle effects, templates and more functions from GUI space. It's also very optimal to use some of the libraries available for default like GUI, which is a very beginner's friendly yet powerful GUI framework or even a more advanced yet also somehow very approachable Druid GUI framework.
Link to both and more you can find in the description. That's all for today. Thank you for your patience and support and see you in the next video where we will add hazards to our games, learn about collisions and connect the GUI to our logic using messaging between those two components. See you and happy defaulting!